that click I am live uh, hopefully we get some people jumping into chat who can let me know whether or not I am broadcasting or not uh, because I don't actually know if it's working as usual so let's just load up the chat over on my other monitor and uh, we'll see if we do anything all right we got a viewer list. It looks like I got some good buddies, Brent and Matt, in chat. Uh, are you folks hanging out with me? Let's see. Refresh this page. All right. Hello, hello. Very cool. All right. I'm glad that's working. Uh, what else do we have here? Let me make sure this is all set up. Very cool. All right. Well, for those of you that have joined me, uh, thanks so much for hanging out. My name is Eddie Zineski, and I have the privilege of serving as a developer evangelist at a company called Twilio, uh, where we do awesome things with communications for developers. So I want to have uh, a bit of a soft start here as people start filling in. Uh, but what we're actually going to build today is a uh, interactive... Uh, answering machine. So in the, the telephone world, we call this an IVR. Uh, I have a little example for it here that we'll show later on. Um, but an IVR is a system that says, like, for English, press 1. Uh, for Spanish, uh, uh, por para español, press 2. Uh, pardon me, I don't know Spanish that much. Um, but it's that system that you can interact with uh, and build it out so it's basically a computer uh, handling your answering machine. Uh, my good buddy Phil has popped into chat. How are you doing, man? Thanks for joining me. Um, so what we have uh, to work with is uh, Twilio's API, which we'll get into a minute, but I want to show you a, uh, an example of an IVR, uh, or an interactive uh, voice recording that is built using Twilio's API. So you may have heard about Cards Against Humanity before. Uh, it is an awfully uh, fun game that is very offensive to all of your friends. And it's just a great thing to play. So I'm sure you've heard of it at some point. It's a card game where you play different cards and people play white cards that match them. You can see in this example going on over here. But what's cool is if you scroll down to the bottom, they have a support phone number under Contact Us. And this is actually a, a Twilio phone number. And again, we'll talk about what that is in more of a second. Uh, but I just want to start off so everyone has an idea of what we're actually going to dive in and build. So there's an ambulance going by outside my apartment. So I'm just going to make this phone call real quick. Uh, I have Google Fi as my phone carrier, so I am able to uh, make some cool calls from this Hangout extension right here. So I click this call button, and uh, let me know if that volume is too loud. Hello. Against all odds, you've reached the Cards Against Humanity customer service line. For English, press 1. Para Español o Prima Número 2. Para Español o Prima Número 2. There we go. Uh, someone press 1. Hello. You've reached the Cards Against Humanity customer service line. We handle all of our customer service issues using the Internet. If you have a real problem, please email us at mail at cardsagainsthumanity.com. If you'd like to navigate our phone tree anyway, please stay on the line. I would like to navigate it. If you gave us money and something went wrong with your order, press 1. That sounds like a good if you thing. Are a st if you ordered Cards Against Humanity from cardsagainsthumanity.com, press 1. If you ordered from Amazon or any other site, press 2. If you bought Cards Against Humanity from a suspicious-looking man in a trench coat, press 3. That's what I did. I bought it from a man in a trench coat. Thanks for letting us know. Please give us just a minute, and we'll get him on the line. Oh, God. Oh, it's a voice recording. Or it's dialing him. Uh, I'm going to hang up before this man actually picks up, uh, because I'm not quite sure what it is. Hello? Hello? What? I was asleep. I have a customer here who says you sold them a copy of Cards Against Humanity? Huh? What's that? Maybe you just sold them something in a Cards Against Humanity box? 
Yeah, I like boxes. I keep all kinds of stuff in boxes. <laughs> uh, come on down to the pier. We'll get it all sorted out. Oh, okay. Would you like to go down to the pier? If so, please press 1. Of, of course. Who wouldn't want to go down to the pier? <laughs> hey, I remember you. I sold you that box. Oh, that box. Uh-oh. That wasn't a card game in that box. No, it was you not. You probably want your money back. I'm a little light right now, but hey, I got a little something in the works. You come with. Take this gun, in case things get hit. Oh gosh. Press 1 to take the gun. I'm, I'm gonna continue to press 1. I'm not sure how much longer we'll go with this. But, but you might want to give this a call, uh... Who's there? On your own. You got the shit? Yeah, I got it. Let's see some money. Who's that with you? I thought you were supposed to be alone. There's someone with them! He's got a gun! Oh my oh, god! <laughs> it was a setup. They're coming for us. Alright, I think we're going to end it here. Uh, but for those of you that have just joined us, uh, we're taking a look at what the uh, Cards Against Humanity customer support line does. And this uh, interactive phone system, so we can call this an interactive uh, answering machine, uh, this is built out using uh, the company that I work for called Twilio. So Twilio has a communications company for developers. It lets people build some really cool stuff. And what this phone number is actually pointed to is a Twilio application. And all of those uh, interactive points where it says press 1 to take the gun, press 1 to go down to the pier, those are all uh, events that Twilio will listen for and record, and you can build your way through this giant phone tree. So that's actually what we're going to be building today, is an interactive voice recording, uh, or an IVR, or answering machine, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but have a go at the Cards Against Humanity hotline if you want to listen to more. I'll definitely have to try it again later to find out what happens in that scary situation. Uh, so like I was saying, Twilio is a, a communications API for developers. It's a tool that developers can use to add cool things into their apps. And one of the products that we offer is a, a voice and SMS and phone number API. So it allows us to do really cool things with phone numbers. Um, before we get started, I'm actually going to be doing something very similar to this brand new tutorial that we just launched. So I'm going to drop it into the chat if you want to have a look at the, the code or where we're going to go forward. Uh, but this is basically an, a Node.js application, so it's a JavaScript application that will build out these interactive voice recordings for you. Uh, so we're going to build something similar, but if you want to follow along, you can definitely hit that link up uh, and we will definitely uh, you know, post it back towards the end. Uh, they get caught up in chat real quick. Uh, welcome everyone, hello. Uh, let me know where you are tuning in from and if you're a developer. Uh, I definitely remember some faces from before, very cool. Uh, I was indeed the person building the Socket.io chat last time. Thank you, Andy Meditate, for joining us again. Uh, so I'm just gonna dive in and get started. Uh, these the tutorials are pretty rad. Uh, we can walk through here and, and look at all the code in different bits. Uh, so. What I'm going to build is going to be the very similar end result to what this tutorial has. So have a go at it later if you want to take a look. So I'm going to pop into my terminal. And I'm going to go right onto my desktop. And I'm going to create a new folder. I have this one that I was using before to play with. So I'm going to create a new folder. And I'm going to... My dog's yawning like a cutie pie. And I'm going to create a new folder called Answering Machine. And I'm going to initialize a, a node package. So npm init will create me a new node package. Uh, it'll create a package JSON. It's basically a, a way to start a node project where I can add in my libraries that I want to use. Uh, if you have any questions along the way, just drop them in the chat and we'll answer them. Uh, but for the meantime, I'm going to install a few packages. So I'm going to use npm install, uh, throw the save flag at it. And we're going to need uh, Express, which is a micro framework for building applications, uh, web applications with Node. Uh, I definitely one of my favorite frameworks. I've streamed about it before. I've wrote blog posts on it. Uh, check it out. Let me know if you need more of a, a detailed explanation about what it is. Uh, and we're going to need this body parser plugin that's going to let us uh, parse out HTTP requests. So HTTP requests are just a bunch of characters and bits and bytes. And it, the server really doesn't mean anything to. So this body parser library will actually make it so we can work with it as a JavaScript object. Uh, and we're going to need the Twilio library as well. So we'll throw it on there. And I'm going to run this. And it's going to do its awesome 
package downloading and what you call it. And we'll sit back while it's finishing. Uh, if you've just joined us, let me know in the chat where you're from and, and if you're a developer, what kind of uh, programming languages you like to work with or frameworks or type of programming. Uh, what we're building right now is a uh, IVR, so an interactive voice recording. So one of those touch one to continue type phone systems. So I have my uh, packages installed. And the first thing we'll do is we will start with a very simple hello world to make sure I haven't screwed anything up. So I'm going to create a new JavaScript file called index.js. And this is going to load it up in my favorite text editor, which is a bit slow to start right now. Normally it's a little quicker. This is a cold boot. <laughs> That's probably why. All right, cool. So I'm going to uh, turn on strict mode because we need it for a few of the JavaScript features we're going to use. And this just kind of enables a, a newer subset of JavaScript uh, features. And we're going to import that, those libraries we just installed. So I'm going to create a new uh, constant called express, and it's going to pull in that express library. So require is how we import a library in Node. Uh, it's kind of like import in other languages. And I'm going to grab that body parser, because we're going to use it later. Oop. Body parser. And what else do we need? Uh, we need to get an instance of Express. So Express is just an application. Uh, I mean, it's just a library. So in JavaScript, libraries are really just functions. So we're going to get a new instance of it. So we'll execute it like a function. And then the next thing we need to do is just set our, our first route handler. So we're going to set a route handler for a get request to our home page, which is that little invisible slash at the end sometimes. And then it's going to call this callback function. Uh, when that request comes in. So this, this req and res are just variables that are going to be passed in. The req is request, which is the, um, the, contains all of the information about the request coming into our server, so all the data that was sent to it. And response is like a, an out buffer that we can write into. So I'm just going to take response and I'm going to send back hello world. And if you've seen me do this before, uh, this shouldn't look you know, new at all. And then we just have to start our app listening on a port. And a port is basically just a, uh, you're walking down the hallway of your university and there's numbers on the door. Your computer has the same concept of numbers for different connections. So 3000 is just the number that our, our server is going to be running on. And I'm going to start this up. Let me open a new shell over here. And let's fire up node index.js. I'm going to pop into my web browser, and just like that, it works. So I went to localhost, which is the local domain name of your computer, and colon 3000 is the port that we were starting on. Uh, Phil, yo, Eddie, and everyone else, I'm watching from London. Yeah, my buddy Phil's over in London. Uh, he does like semicolons in his JavaScript. Uh, I am following standard JS right now, which is a ooh, yeah, JavaScript style. It's what I've been using lately. It's really nice. Uh, it doesn't use semicolons though. Uh, it's yelling at me because I have a, a body parser function that I imported and haven't used yet, so that's good to know. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do real quick is install Nodemon. And Nodemon is going to be a kind of like a watcher. It's going to sit in our uh, terminal, and when a file is saved, it's going to restart our node application for us. So that's going to install. And while that's installing, I'm going to uh, open up my package.json, and I'm going to set up a, uh, a dev script for now. So this will just be node modules, which is where it installs to. Uh, bin nodemon index.js and I think that'll work so it's file has been changed oh gosh yes uh, let's see oh it was saving while I was doing that Derp. let's run that again real quick uh, dev and it will be dot slash node modules bin nodemon 
uh, index.js. Perfect. And if I come back over here and run npm run dev, uh, it'll start up Nodemon and it'll start a script up. So whenever I save a new file, it is going to uh, reload the application. So I refresh to make sure everything's working. All right, great. Uh, not so standard. No, it is not, Phil. It is uh, definitely quite a lot of flack when it came out as well. Uh, Clowns123, thank you for the follow. Uh, very kind of you. Thanks for joining us. Where are you from? Uh, let me know in chat. And so now uh, we can debate semicolons more, Phil, or I can proceed to uh, write some more code. So I think I'm going to do that for now. But I'd like to have the semicolon debate at some point. I know Kevin is a, a big fan of semicolons or uh, he changes his mind sometimes. Uh, so the next thing we need to do is we need to, um, we'll do a quick hello world of, of setting up Twilio. So I'm going to pop into my uh, Twilio account here. Oxford, England, very cool. It is, it is plus four now. Um, yeah, plus four for me now, right? Phil and Clowns, uh, used to be plus five. Yes, we have the fancy daylight savings time here in the States. I'm, I'm coming to you live from Brooklyn, New York, where it is a very gloomy day. Uh, oh, thanks for joining us, Sam. I should do a Vim stream at some point. Uh, I am a big fan of the, the Vims and the Tmuxes. We can talk more about that later. Um, so let us buy a, uh, a US phone number, and then I'll also get a, uh, a, a English, uh, England, what do you call it? England? England. Uh, da, 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 da. United Kingdom. Sorry. Apologies, my dear friends from over the pond. Uh, we will buy a United Kingdom phone number uh, so both of you can join in and play as well. So I'm going to buy a phone number from Brooklyn real quick. Uh, Brooklyn. And Queens will do. Sometimes that search can be a little wonky. So I'm going to buy this real quick. And I'm going to set it up. So with the click of a number, uh, a button, I am now the owner of this Twilio phone number. So that's really cool. Uh, so we'll call this IVR Stream US. And I'm going to save it. And I'm also going to grab a United Kingdom phone number. Da -da -da. Time zones. Yes. Oh, you're changing over this weekend now. Okay. Yeah, time zones are... We could talk about time zones for a while. I would be fine with, you know, 1700 hours being my morning if everyone could adopt a, a single time zone or just UTC time. Cool. <clears throat> so I'm going to buy a United Kingdom phone number. And, oh, let's see. Uh, toll free, toll free. Ah. I'm going to grab this one because it's got some features that I want. Let me know if this will not work, Phil, uh, and I will go back and grab another one. But I will grab this for now. And hopefully that works. Actually, I'll just wait till you say something in chat. Uh, the greatest problem in the internet for us is finding out whether I drop down. You know, you can grab it. Oh, yes. Uh, that is, uh, I can imagine that being very challenging. Uh, Americans usually put themselves at the top of that list. So... I do not feel your pain on that. I am sorry. But, okay, I haven't... That should work. Great. Thanks, buddy. So I'm going to click this buy button. And I am now the owner of another Twilio phone number. So what did we call this? We called IVR Stream uh, UK. And we'll go back and we'll talk more about what these do and how to configure them in just a second. We're just doing calling. Yes. Uh, we are just going to do calling. Um, or we might ask SMS later on. Who knows? Uh, but I think it'll work with both. And so now I've got these two phone numbers. And what we need to do is we need to configure it with a uh, the URL of our web server. So I'm going to open these in two different tabs real quick. And what's going to happen is that when someone calls our phone number, uh, Twilio is going to make an HTTP request to whatever web server address I give it. So this is the default one that it uses, uh, this voice one here. So whenever a phone call comms in, you can't do issue national MS to a UK landline, that's all. Gotcha. 
Okay, that's good to know. Uh, so when the phone call comes in, Twilio is going to make an HTTP POST request to this URL, and it's going to look for something that we call Twimmel, which is a XML uh, set of commands. So XML is a markup language. Uh, Twimmel is XML. It just uses some fancy different verbs and nouns, and we'll get all, all into that in a second. Uh, but where my web server is going to live is going to be at a, a URL that I'm going to use this nifty tool called ngrok. And ngrok lets you take a local ad port on your web server, I mean, on your local computer. So one of those doors that we were talking about. Uh, in this case, you know, it's door 3000 using the HTTP protocol. And when I run this command, it actually sets up a tunnel. So any traffic that gets sent to this address will get sent to my local web server. So here's that hello we had before. It's a little tiny. There's the hello we had before. Cool. So I'm going to pop into my config and we're going to tell Twilio that when a phone call comes in to uh, hit this endpoint out. And we're going to give it a route of uh, we'll do like IVR welcome. I think that's what it does in the tutorial as well. So it's Twilio is going to make a request to IVR welcome when a phone call comes in. So I'm going to save that and I'm going to set it up the same for the UK number. And I'll paste these in the chat in a second for you all. Um, but real quick, we're going to change our web server to just kind of deal with like a very simple hello world of uh, when this phone call comes in. So I'm going to create that new route handler at slash IVR slash welcome. And it's going to take in the same kind of request response function. And I'm going to send back a string for now. Uh, we can talk more about this and show you a better way to do this. Uh, but for now, I just want you to see that what we're doing isn't magic. So Twimmel is just a set of uh, words in brackets. This is XML for you. So the first thing we're going to send back is a response. And everything in Twimmel starts with this response. So the next thing we're going to send back is a, uh, a slew of different commands that we can use. We're going to use the say command, which will say something in a robot voice when the, the call is answered. So I'm going to say, hello world. Um, how is how are things going today? Cool. And just like that, this will work. Uh, to show you what that looks like, I'm going to pop over to our server. So I see our server down here is restored automatically for us. And I'm going to make a post request manually uh, to my own server. So I'm going to hit localhost 3000, IVR welcome. Uh, and you'll see that it just sends back this Twimmel response. Uh, and this is all Twilio needs to actually do something with that phone call. It's really simple. So I'm going to paste in the numbers real quick. So I'll drop the UK number in the chat. And I'm going to drop the US number into chat. And I'm going to open that little extension I have and make another phone call. And uh, we'll see if it works or not. Hello, world. How are things going today? So it worked. That was awesome. Very cool. So you can give it a ring yourself. Um, I'll be able to see if your requests are coming in. So it looks like I'm the only one who hit it right now. But the the, the code we wrote worked. It was very simple and straightforward. So that post request was made and we responded with um, you know, just this Twimmel block as a string. And Twilio was able to interpret it. Uh, we don't want to have to write these strings by hand because it's you know, who wants to write XML by hand? So what we're going to use is the Twilio library to do this for us. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so I'm going to create a new li a variable and pull in the Twilio library. And I'm going to come here and I'm going to uh, create a new variable called Twimmel. And that is going to be equal to new twilio.twimmel response. So this will give us an object that we can work with. And we can take our Twimmel and we can tell it that we want to say, uh, hello world, this is a different message. And then inside of our send, uh, we're going to call Twimmel 
and turn it into a string. And just like that, we have the same uh, code and response as before. You can see if I pop over here and make that request again. Uh, it has a little more information in it. This is the XML header. Uh, it's optional in regards to Twilio, but you should throw it in there usually. <coughs> um, and here's the same thing we had before. So making this phone call again, uh, everything should still work. So I'm going to confirm that. see the request come in in real time. Hello, world. This is a different message. Perfect. Very excellent. If you notice that when the, the response is done, uh, the call just kind of ends, and that's the behavior we're expecting. So that's what will happen when the, we're out of instructions, the call will just end. Uh, and to show you real quick everything that's possible, I'm going to Google Twilio Twimmel, and it will give me a very nice... Um, Twimmel reference doc here. Uh, Zoga, yes, similar to the Ari on Asterix, it seems. Yes, uh, I believe Twimmel is based off of Voice XML, or that's where the inspiration came from. And it's a markup language to do some of the similar um, same. Give it an accent. Yes, we will totally give it an accent. <clears throat> Uh, and we can actually show a way to give it an accent um, based on where the user is calling from. So we can give it an English accent based on your inbound phone number. So we can check a look at that later. And apologies, I have a bit of a cold. I'm getting over it. So here is our voice twimmel. And we're going to click the say docs over here. So let me drop this into chat. So if you want to follow along at home, you can go there and I just click the say link on the left. And here we can see what we're allowed to do with our, uh, our, our say verb. We call these verbs, right? So there's different verbs and nouns. Uh, the verb is say, you know, we want the Twilio to say something in a robot voice. So here we can actually pick different voices. So Alice is the all supreme awesome one. So we're going to toss Alice on here, and we can have a ton of different languages with Alice. So if you see, uh, I'm looking at voice, so I can give it a voice, and then a language. So it says, if your voice is set to Alice, you can choose any of these different uh, languages. And there's a bunch of different U.S. English ones. <coughs> I mean, uh, English-speaking ones. We'll use English GB. So I'm going to uh, pull up the Twilio node docs so we can show you what this looks like. Dun, dun, dun. And how we, how we configure this is by passing it an object to the Twimmel command. So I'll drop this into chat too. This is the library we're working with. And if we scroll down here, we can look at the Twimmel basics. And you can see here that here's our say. <clears throat> and we can give it an object as a second parameter with the voice and the language. So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to give it Alice and then English GB. So voice is going to be Alice and what is it? Language? Yes. Language will be ENGB. Very cool. Uh, and our server will restart, and I'm going to make that phone call again, and we'll see that it is now a new... Uh, it is now a new voice, so you can follow along at home. Uh, for those of you who have just joined us, we're building an interactive uh, phone number system, uh, answering machine, where you, we can do cool things like press 1 for English, uh, press 1 to make it rain magical unicorns. And here are the phone numbers that you can follow along with at home. The first number is a U.S. number, and the second number is a uh, U.K. number. And if we have folks from other countries, let me know, and we can see about getting a number for you as well. So, uh, popping back here, I want to make sure this voice works, so let's do that. So I'm going to call this number. Hello, world. This is a different message. 
it was indeed a different message, and it was a message in a different voice, which was cool. So the docs have tons of different ways that we can uh, tweak the voice, <coughs> do different things, and really have a great time and experiment. So I'm going to leave it as that voice for now. Uh, like I said, we can take a look at tweaking it more later. <coughs> but I want to get into the next Twimble command. So the next Twimble command is actually where it's going to be the, the, the meat of our uh, IVR or our answering machine. And that is going to be the gather command. And what gather is, is a way for you to push buttons on your phone and those, bu those numbers get sent back to my web server. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to cough really hard and mute my mic real quick. All right. So looking at gather, we see that there's a few different uh, attributes we can give it. And quick question from Zogat in chat. Regarding Twilio, perhaps you know, do they offer companies, developers, test trunks as a way that we can work on integration with systems without the real intent of using calls and the cost associated with it? So we have trial accounts uh, that are pretty much sandboxed. You can use them with uh, certain white labeled phones on your account and the trial account is pretty much unlimited. So you can make calls. It's got a, a message that warns you this number is a Twilio trial account. Please upgrade your account. But you can use all the features of Twilio without actually getting charged for any of that integration. Uh, as for the trunking, that I don't know. Uh, we can look that up or maybe one of my buddies, Phil or Matt, could look that up for me. Uh, but I, I believe all of the features of Twilio are available in the trial account uh, that has no cost with associated, um, you know, using white labeled things. So, but maybe Phil or, or someone could check on me if I'm wrong in there. Uh, so popping back over, the way we're going to use gather, here's a great one. So here's our response and here's the gather. So we wrap our say inside the gather. So it, the gather has to start first, it kind of initializes, and then anything nested inside of it will uh, be carried out uh, while you know it's listening for keys. So the keys are going to just be the numbers that we press, uh, and there's some options we can set. So we can tell Twilio you know, what kind of method to uh, send those keys over to our web server. So what they're going to do is make an HTTP request that says, hey, these digits were pressed. Uh, we can, you know, cap the number of digits that we want to use. So we'll probably be doing this for most of our menus. And, you know, we can do a timeout. Uh, and the action is going to be where the URL uh, that Twilio is going to send out of the request to. So if we scroll down a little more, it's going to send us these digits. And to be able to get those digits, uh, we need to use that body parser middleware. So before I was talking about body parser, it's just a simple function that parses out an HTTP request into a JavaScript object that we can work with. So I can use body parser URL encoded, and I have to give it this options of extended false. <coughs> Excuse me. And, and now we'll be able to work with uh, the inbound request. So we'll be able to look at it under this request.body. And this is how we're going to parse out these numbers that are coming in. So for our first um, bit of thing uh, or bit of uh, coding, we will say, hello, please press one to continue. And what this is going to need to be done is wrapped inside of our, um, I lost my place, sorry. So we need to take our Twimmel and we need to uh, call the gather on it. <coughs> and now to show you what this looks like, um, when you're nesting verbs, there's a bit of a different syntax. Uh, it involves a callback function. So where is nesting? Nesting syntax. Perfect. Excuse me. And the way we nest is by passing as the next argument a callback function where this is bound to the new inner twimmel, uh, which is some fun JavaScript magic using function.bind, which is fun. So if you see here, 
the action. So we just give this the an object with all those properties. So action is going to be where we want Twilio to send the request. Uh, and we're going to use the docs to limit it to, you know, one digit or so. So I'm going to tell Twimmel to do a gather. And we're going to have to give it another function. So that's in a, we call this a fat arrow. It's a newer JavaScript syntax. And it changes to this. Uh, actually, I don't know if that will work with ES6. That's funny because it doesn't. Uh, fat arrows don't have their own uh, scoping defined, so I'm actually not sure if that will work. We can try that out later. Uh, so we'll just use a regular function for now. And uh, let me make sure I have this all closed off properly. So we got to close that one, and we got to close that one. Perfect. <coughs> and let's fix this indenting. Cool. So the function we've given it is a uh, a nesting uh, set of options for the gag uh, the the gather. And inside of here is actually we're going to pass in these commands. So the first thing we'll do is we'll send num digits to one because we only want one digit sent back. And the next thing we'll do is we have to set the action. So we're going to want Twilio to um, make this post request somewhere in our web server. So we will call the route uh, IVR, and we'll just say step one for now. Um, we might come up with a better way to do this in a little bit. But I think this will work for now. And the default method is post, which is great. And the default timeout is five seconds. And I think that's all we need for now. So this route is done. Uh, and just like before, uh, I want to post to this to make sure we're getting what we expect out of it. So we get back a response with a gather. And there's the stuff we set on it with our nested say and the voice. And everything closed. So perfect. That looks like it'll work. So the problem is that this next route doesn't exist yet. So we need a IVR welcome with a request and a response like before. And so in here, Twilio is going to post the digits that were pressed. So we can pull that out with uh, let digit equal request.body.digit. And that will just be contained in the body. and. Let's just echo back what was pressed. So we'll create a new Twimmel, new Twilio, Twilio .twimmel response, and we'll say, just like before, you pressed the number, uh, and I'm going to use, uh, we'll just, I'm going to use template strings for now. Uh, and template strings are just a way to do string interpolation in JavaScript, which is fun. So you press the number uh, digit. And we're just going to send back our Twimmel like we did above. And before we make that call, I'm just going to test real quick. So step one, I'm going to say the data, digits, is it digits or digit? Digits equals one. Post IVR step one. You cannot post IVR step one. What did I do wrong? Oh, I didn't change the name. Step one. Perfect. And you press the number undefined. Okay, so what did I do? Yeah, it's digits, not digit. There we go, you pressed the number one. Cool. So this is good to test. Uh, so if you've just joined us, uh, the what we're building is an interactive uh, answering machine, and we have two phone numbers that we can use, a English uh, United States phone number and a uh, United Kingdom phone number. So I'm going to put those in the chat again. And 
Sorry, interesting. I've got a bit more Google food. Okay, cool. Yeah, well, let us know if you don't get that solved for you. Um, you our support team is very helpful, too, so you can shoot an email to help at twilio.com, and they can figure that out for you, too. So I'm going to make this phone call to our phone number, and we're going to listen for that answer. Hello, world. This is a different message. Oh. Uh, did I not? What did I do? Oh, we didn't change the the text. Oops. Hello, world. Please press 1 to continue. All right. Okay. So let's dial that number again. Sorry about that. Hello, world. Please press 1 to continue. You press the number 1. Cool. And you see, we didn't set the voice there, so we had the default voice come through. Yeah. So that's cool. So we just have our very first uh, IVR. It's our first interactive voice recording. Uh, it's, you know... From here, we can go just about anywhere. So I have a few ideas. Uh, I want to take some suggestions from the crowd, too. So I'd like to build out an IVR, uh, do some funny or complex things. Uh, does anyone have a, th a, th a suggestion for a theme? Uh, what kind of theme we can use for our IVR? So the tutorial that I posted uh, earlier, which I'll link to now. Uh, let's drop that off. So this one uses uh, ET, which is a pretty funny tutorial about ET phoning home. The extraterrestrial uh, phone home service. Very cool. Uh, so if anyone wants to suggest a theme, we'll go down that route. Uh, otherwise, we'll I don't know, come up with something or roll the dice. Who knows? Uh, but please drop something in the chat. In the meantime, uh, I'm going to close up some of these tabs. Okay. Close this one out. Uh, that's the next step. Very cool. Perfect. Um, so, now that this is working, um, we need a theme. So, no one suggested one. So, I'm going to do one of my favorite things, which is go to GitHub. Actually, that's a good thing. We'll, uh, we'll put the code on GitHub in case anyone wants to grab this and follow along. Uh, but the tutorial actually has a link to its own code right here. So if you go there. But I like to come in here and I like to create a new repo. And verbose sniffle. Okay. So this generates you a random name. Um, I think uh, watch D. Watch D. Watch DN. Thank you for joining us. Good afternoon. Uh, whereabouts are you coming in from? Uh, so I think sniffle is a very uh, great topic considering that I am sick right now. And apologize for my cough and voice being gross. So let us do a, uh, a phone tree for our doctor. Madison, Wisconsin. That is one of my favorite places. I was actually out there in August, which I am understanding is kind of the, the nicest time out of the year. And I was there at the University of, of Madison for a Techstars event, which is a, a accelerator. Uh, and I loved it. It was a great place. I stayed down by the waterfront. Uh, very nice place. Very cool. Are you a student there? Okay. Um, so we're going to do a, uh, a doctor's answering machine. And we'll go from there. So we can kind of see how we can do these different bits and bots. And then we'll throw in some other Twimmel verbs. Uh, out of college these days. Okay, very cool. Dun, dun, dun. And we need to use a play. What can I use to record voice on my Mac? Does QuickTime let you do it? I think it does. What is the software you are using to forward the traffic from the domain to your local host? Ah, yes, very good question. Ngrok, exactly. Thank you. 
Let me put a little. Thank you very much for the, the assist there. Uh, so, what was I doing? I was, oh, looking to do a, uh, a play of some sort. Oop. So we're going to want to have a, uh, we don't want to just have a robot voice. We can play an audio file as well. So let me grab QuickTime. If it, new audio recording. Okay, that's very cool. And I'm going to just record a quick message so we can do our own voice. Thank you for calling the SICK support hotline. To continue, please press 1. Thank you for calling the SICK support hotline. Alright, there we go. Let's save that. M4A. Uh, I think it'll work with M4A. We'll find out. I'm just going to put that in the folder we have here. Uh, I'm going to create a new folder and we'll call this assets. And inside here we'll put audio and we'll call this welcome the M4A. And actually let's look at Twilio. Can we use a M4A? Uh, it might only be MP3 and wave. But who knows? Maybe it'll work. Let's give it a try. And so I'm going to I'm going to change the say. I'm going to comment it out real quick. <coughs> and let's see. We're going to say this dot play um, audio welcome dot m4a. I'm not quite sure if this will work, but we will find out. And so we need to set up a, uh, a static uh, file, I mean, a, a HTTP route. So anything in this, this assets folder, uh, we're going to want to be served automatically. So I'm going to turn on the express static. So we're going to need two things real quick. Uh, and I said I was going to get the code on GitHub. I'll do that in a second too. So we're going to require a path, uh, which will allow us to build out paths. Uh, and if you just joined me, let me know in the chat where you're from. What we're building is an interactive voice recording, which is a fun answering machine where you can press buttons. And so we're going to enable the uh, express.static middleware. And inside here, we're going to do path.join. And we're going to give it dir name, which is the current directory name, and slash assets. And I think that'll work. Let's make sure our server doesn't crash. And we should be able to hit it at audio welcome.m4a. Perfect. Thank, Thank you for calling. All right. And. So Twilio is going to try to play Welcome M4A, uh, and we'll see if that works. I don't actually know if it supports M4As, so it'll be good to learn. Well, I'm going to make a call. And it did not work with the M4A. Okay. That is a bummer. So we need to ffmpeg m4a to mp3. Oh, looks like I've tried to do this before. Oh, actually, I think I did do this recently. ffmpeg. There we go. Look at that. All right. So input is assets, uh, let's cd into assets, audio, and we're going to change welcome m4a into welcome mp3. And that worked. Cool. 
So that command that I ran, uh, I must have gotten from some other project I was doing. Uh, it's FFmpeg is a Unix library that lets you convert uh, audio and video files. It's pretty rad. So the input was this one. The codec we're using was MP3. Uh, I don't know what this flag does. I probably copied and pasted it. This I'm assuming is the bit rate. Maybe this is compression and this is the out file. So just like that we converted our audio file. So calling the number again should work. And I'm going to paste it in here. Thank you for calling the SICK support hotline. All right. Thank you please press 1. You press the number 1. Very cool. All right. So that was fun and simple. So now we know how we can do that. Uh, so maybe we'll use some audio files as we go along, uh, but it, that was just really straightforward. We our play verb, uh, we could just give it a you know, URL to a audio file, and let's look at the docs for play. What else can we give it? Uh, da -da, just loops, so we can loop and and no full default digits for play. The digits, oh, these are DTMF tones. So we can have it play uh, DTMF tones, which are the actual digits that are pressed on the phone. So that's neat. And yeah, there's some other cool docs in here. So very cool. Uh, if you want to follow along at home, here are the URLs to that. And so let's get this on GitHub real quick. So we'll call this Twitch. Uh, the stream. Uh, actually, what did I call my other ones? Let's see. I want to have a consistent name. Twitch. Okay, just prefix Twitch. So Twitch. IVR. Ah, that works for me. And. Let's initialize it. Uh, we'll toss the MIT license on there. Very cool. Yay! All right, so I'm just going to grab that real quick and just open another window. And if you just joined us, uh, what we're building is a interactive answering machine. So it is a way that we can do um, number presses on the phone. So it'll say press one to continue. Uh, if you have a US number, you can call this phone number. And if you have a UK phone number, you can call the second one. And you can check out our progress of what we made so far. So uh, let me push this up to GitHub. So I've got to create a new Git repo. And what do we got here? We got a few of these. So we'll do uh, a GI. So it's this little shell extension I have that will generate me a Git ignore. So it's just files we don't want to have. And I'm going to send this out to Git ignore. And that worked. And there's nothing identifiable in here, right? All right, let's push that out. So git add dot git commit dash m oh we're supposed to pull first git remote add origin Boop -a -doo. so I'm gonna add that as a remote and then I can git pull origin master everything's good and I'm going to, uh, I'm just going to blow away that M4A. Actually, we'll keep it for now. It might have a use for it at some point. Uh, and so let's commit this. Initial commit, git commit, add working, add hello IVR. Perfect. And I'm going to push that up. Push dash U, set it as the upstream. Perfect. And I refresh this, and there's our code. Cool. So I'll drop this in the chat as well. And great. So now you can follow along at home. And our IVR is going to be a six support hotline because that is what GitHub suggested, and I am feeling ill. So 
we need to uh, so let me open like a text document real quick uh, and we will go from there so I'll do it here so I'll do like tab edit uh, notes.txt so we'll kind of walk through what we're going to uh, ask the user when they call in so we'll do a welcome and let's see if you like one to continue okay and that will go to uh, actually we'll change that it won't be one to continue we'll say uh, no we'll leave it because it's already recorded so the next screen will say uh, why are you calling please tell me why you uh, please Select from the following options. Please tell me why you are calling. Period. Select from the following options. Awesome. Okay. Derp. And we'll say one will be uh, I am sick. Two. Okay. Uh, what what should two be? Um, and please, uh, if you have any suggestions uh, as to what we can do or how to make this fun or funny, please drop it in the chat. Uh, I want this to be as interactive as possible. So, uh, so one will be I am sick. Two will be I want to be a doctor doctor and so let's see if one is pressed it will say please tell me how sick you are on a scale of 1 to 10 how sick are you 1 to 10 how sick are you Perfect. And from there we'll do something else. Alright, so let, that's a good place to start. So let's code this up. So, we already have the first step. So the welcome. Um, pull this out. We'll use that in a little bit. And so step one is going to be uh, step one will actually be menu now. So we'll call this menu. Great. So menu will, uh, we can either record a voice or we can just do text. Uh, let's do text for now. And we're not going to worry about the digits. So we'll comment that line out because one is just always going to be pressed um, and yeah we don't care if they it, it'll right now it'll work if they press anything but one but it doesn't really matter we're going to assume that they're ill enough that they can't see the uh, digits on their phone so it'll support it that way <laughs> so let's see we have our terminal response and we need to do our say. So inside here, change inside. What are we going to say? Please tell me why you're calling. Select from the following options. Please tell me. Oh, and this needs to be nested inside of a gather. I'm always going to forget that. Got our function. And we gotta close that, and this has to be changed to this. Perfect. All right. And 
let's set this up just as above. So we're going to do num digits. Let's see. I'm just going to copy this. So num digits. Uh, and if you just join me in chat, uh, what we're building is a interactive voice recording. So it's a way to do some. Uh, let me grab a sticky too. It's a way to build a answering machine that you can interact with. So I'm just going to put the phone numbers up here so I don't have to keep going back. Call in and we'll say that ah, looks so ugly. Plus one, three, four, seven, nine, five, two, seven, five, two, six. Okay. Uh, so US will be that number, and UK will be this number. Uh, and if you're joining from somewhere that is not one of these places, let me know and we can see about getting a phone number. One, six, eight. Six two zero seven zero three four. And hopefully I didn't type those wrong. And let's make that font a little bigger. Uh, and if this doesn't look good in the stream, let me know and I can fix it or make it bigger or something. And we'll just kind of toss that right there. Great. Cool. So you can give that number a call to see what we're doing. And the step we were on was uh, the user is going to be asked why they're calling into phones, uh, the, the SICK hotline. And we're going to tell them, please tell me Please tell me why you are calling select from the following options. And then I'm going to do another say and change surrounding brackets to that. Great. Okay. So press one if you are sick. Press 2 if you would like to become a doctor. All right. And so this is going to post the numbers to, uh, we'll call this, <coughs> uh, Step one, I think that'll make sense. So I'm just going to copy this whole block. And there's a, there's a way we can do this where we don't reuse as much code, which will be nice. Uh, we'll do that in a second. But if you just joined us, let us know in chat where you are from. And if you are a software developer, what kind of code you like to write. So I'm going to send this, say this is now step one, and we're going to need this line, so we're going to need the digits that come out of it, and so we'll call this uh, const uh, let map response map equal so what I'm thinking is that we can have a, a number on this side. So this is a, an object, and it will point to a function. Um, so we'll say sick, <coughs> and we'll just call it I am sick for now. And if two is pressed, I become doctor. Okay. And 
So down here I'm going to define those functions. So I am sick and we need I become doctor. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to call, so these are going to take in Twimmel. I think this will be the best way to do it for now. We're kind of mutating data, but it'll do. So we'll say response map with digit. So it will go into the digit and then call that function and pass in twimmel. And we'll say twimmel equals. So we'll reassign it. Cool. And I think that will work. So inside of I am sick, let's just do a real quick uh, test. So we'll do a say, I am sorry that you are sick. That sucks. Goodbye. Uh, and we'll return Trimble. <coughs> okay, I think that'll work. So let's see if we can get to that point. So I'm going to call this phone number. Thank you for calling the SICK Support Hotline. To continue, please press 1. Please tell me why you are calling. Select from the following options. Press 1. If you are sick, press 2. If you would like to become a doctor. I am sorry that you are sick. That sucks. Goodbye. <laughs> okay. That worked. That was cool. Well, that was cool. I'm, I'm kind of happy with that one. So, what we need to do next is actually handle uh, both of those options. So, let's see. So, if you are sick, press 1. Press 2 if you'd like to become a doctor. So, in here it's supposed to say... Okay, so we'll, we'll leave the, that sucks, and we'll just say, we'll do this again. So we'll say, uh, da, da, da. on a scale of 1 to 10, how sick are you? And we'll say, please enter Enter, how sick are you? How sick are you? How sick you are? Well, please enter, how sick you are. I think that's proper. How sick you are. Great. Okay. And so now this needs to be in a gather. So we're going to have to do our same magic as before. So we'll do a new gather with a function. And we'll move these inside there. Fix the indenting and change this to this. <coughs> change that as well. Great. And so the maximum number of digits we want now is two. Is there a maximum? What does this say? Digits. Oop, no, we don't want play. We want, what do we want? We want gather. Num digits. One might set num digits to five. Please ask to. 
So I don't think we can ask for one or two digits. I think it's only two or one. So that's okay. We'll make do. Actually, we can say on a scale of 0 to 9, how sick are you? And then it's just very straightforward. Or we can just hope that the user follows the rules and, and does what they're told. So we'll gather, we'll gather unlimited digits for now. And then we'll just add an action in. And the action is going to be... Uh, we can actually reuse this route now. No, 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 we can't We'll we'll say IVR step two for now. I'm sure there's a better way to Organize this I think the tutorial actually shows a great way to do it. Let's take a peek real quick So this is the tutorial I'm looking at And I'm gonna look at the code And in here Let's see. App. <coughs> uh, not app. Index. Not index. Routes. Okay. IVRs. So, what does this show us? Uh, they're all commented. That's weird. That's some broken syntax highlighting there, GitHub, is what it looks like. Okay. So, IVR menu, okay. Planets, that makes sense. Oh, so yeah, that's cool. We're doing it the same way. Oh, and they actually pass in node, so you don't have to call this. That works even better. Now we don't have to use the uh, actual function we can use the fat arrows uh, okay so actually let's change that real quick because I am not a fan of typing the word function out so wherever we're using a gather we can change this and say node and now this will be node node Node, cool. Gather. Node. All right, any other gathers? Yes, one more. Cool. All right. Let's uh, let's make sure our, our phone call still works. Thank you for calling the Six Support Hotline. Please tell me why you are calling. I am sorry that you are sick. That sucks. On a scale of one to ten, please enter how sick you are. How sick you are. Okay, perfect. So that will send to IVR step two. Um, and so, ah, let's just put that down here. So I'm just going to copy this whole thing. And this will now be step two. And in here, Uh, we can, so we'll get a, we'll get back how sick they are on a scale of 1 to 10. Uh, and then we can just do a quick, let's see. So we'll say uh, sick greater than, so sick 0 to 3. Rest up, you will be okay. Six, uh, four to seven, 
you may want to go see a doctor. Sick eight to ten. Uh, sick eight to nine. Oh my, go to the hospital. Sick ten, so we'll say greater than ten. Uh, you, I'm sorry, but you probably won't make it. Okay, perfect. Uh, cool. So, in our, let's do a switch statement. So, so switch on digit. So now this is digits. And let's pull our twimmel above it. And cool. So now we have our digits. And we're going to say... Uh, Let's see, switch JavaScript. What does a conditional switch look like in JavaScript? You just probably give it like greater than. Or maybe I can't. Too many other programming languages. Oh, that stinks. Doo -doo -doo. Oh, all right. So we'll just do instead of a switch, we'll just do a big if else statement. That's what happens when you write too many languages all the time. So, so we're gonna need to turn digits into a uh, integer of sorts, right? So if we take, uh, I don't remember what it is exactly. So we'll take one dot two string to number JavaScript. Perfect. I know we can call new number, but what's the preferred way to do it? Parse int. Okay. Parse int. Ten. Perfect. All right. Cool. So parse int of this if digits so if not digits will return uh, let's pull twim up here. So if if they didn't push the digits or it timed out or something, we'll say twimmel dot say I didn't get any digits. And we could redirect. So how do we redirect? Let's see. Just redirect. Very cool. So twimmel dot redirect and we'll send them back to IVR step one and we'll return twimmel dot two string uh, sorry return send to string where do those p's come from cool okay so if there's no digits I didn't get any digits. Send them back to get some digits. Yeah, I have a feeling we're going to be doing that over and over again. So maybe we'll abstract it into like a helper. But for now, so if digits is less than 
or equal to three. What did we say? Rest up, you be okay. Okay, so we'll take our twimmel, twimmel dot say rest up, you will be okay, you big baby. Else Else if, okay, digits is uh, what was the other one we said? We said four to seven. So else is less than or equal to seven. Uh, Twimmel. You may want to go see a doctor. You may want to go see a doctor. Else if digits is less than or equal to, you said nine. Oh my, go to the hospital. Oh my, you should go to the hospital. Else, I am sorry. I'm sorry. You probably aren't going to make it. And we'll change this to double quotes. Perfect. And I think that'll work. Let's find out. So we're gonna grab our number again. Grab my little extension. I'm going to call this number and we'll see if this works. Thank you for calling the sick. Please tell me why you are calling. I am sorry that you are sick. That sucks on a scale of one to 10. Please enter how sick you are. Rest up. You will be okay, you big baby. <laughs> okay. Alright, let's try some of the other ones out. Thank you for calling the... Please tell me why you are calling. I am sorry that you are sick. That sucks on a scale of 1 to 10. Please enter how sick you are. I am sorry. You probably aren't going to make it. Okay, so that was a little long of a delay, so let's shorten that delay, which we can do inside of gather. Timeout is five seconds, so let's make timeout to like three seconds. Right. Timeout. Timeout. Uh, okay, we just give it a number. So, num digits. Okay, we can just give it a number. So we'll give it three seconds. Okay, let's try that again. Thank you for calling. Please tell me why you are calling. 
Select from the following options. I am sorry that you are sick. That sucks. On a scale of 1 to 10, please enter how sick you are. You may want to go see a doctor. <laughs> okay. All right, so that worked. So let's add in this I become doctor bridge or branch. And what this is going to do. So let's indent this. And we'll say here to. Uh, so this is, what are we going to tell people when they tell us they want to become a doctor? Hmm. I'm going to go fill up my water. If you have any suggestions, drop them in the chat and I will be right back. So let's see, what are we going to do? Well, I still want someone to help come up with an idea, uh, but in the meantime let me commit this and push this up. If you think of anything or have any suggestions on what we should do if the user wants to become a doctor, uh, let me know in the chat. <laughs> So let's see, we got get status, a little gif if index, add branch for six scale. Oop, what did I do? Okay. All right, so let's see. Let's look at the data we get back on a phone call. So I am going to do a quick I'm going to do a quick debugger here. And we'll be able to play with whatever we get back. So no debug index. I'm going to call this again and I just want to see what Twilio is handing me. Sorry, an application oh, error has a... What did I do wrong? Let's try that again. That was weird. Thank you for calling the... All right, so here actually we can drop into a REPL inside the debugger and we can look at the request body and we can see everything that's been sent to us. So let me scroll this. We are so, sorry, an application error has occurred. Okay. Goodbye. Uh, uh, but the so we have the zip so we have the person's zip code uh, so is there an api for universities maybe let's see can we find a so we have their zip code of their phone number. So I wonder if we can find a university that is near their zip code. Match college. US Gov University. I thought they had something. Maybe not. What was that? Let's see. iPads. I don't know what iPads is. I 
eyebrows. Developers, 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 developers. What is this one? Query um, for university by zip code. Maybe we can use Google Maps to find it. Let's see. Match College. Oh, this is interesting. How do I get this? I always hate when they do this. You can get an API key by emailing somebody here. <laughs> That's fun. Uh, it doesn't help us right now. It always happens at a hackathon where I'm like, man, I wish I, uh, I wish I had an API key for this service. If only someone would be checking their email on a Saturday. Yeah. Government API. All right. Maybe I'll we'll have to pivot on this. Let's see. Google Maps API. Places API. That might be cool. Okay. Let's grab an API key for this real quick. This will load. Did I lose internet? Nope, I did not lose internet. Google just being slow. Please, can I have API key? There we go. Fetching API details. Doo -doo -doo. All right, let's look at the guide in the meantime. Place searches. Okay. So I I hope that we can be like, hey, what are universities near my zip code? Uh, let's use... That looks like a good one. I just had to pick a random project. Generate. All right, here's our API key. All right. So let's see. Let's see. Google Maps API node. I'm sure they have a package somewhere. And they do. And it is only 23 days since the last commit. Perfect. Place search. Here we go. Oh, no, we want the other thing. Okay. So, npm install Google Maps. Install, save, Google Maps. And...
Okay, so I think I'm just going to do it in a different file for now. Uh, let's drop this down. Uh, so... So I'm going to require that Google Maps package. And we're going to say... All right. Google Maps API. And inside here it wants key. And then we'll give it that key we got generated. Now let's see if this works. All right, so now we have GM API. And places, 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 places. Lib, they don't have an examples directory. Place search. Oh, it says not complete though. Oh, bummer. Dun, dun, dun. Debugger. Let's see if we can play with it. Okay. Ooh. Oh, I still have. Oh, okay. Yeah, but real quick. So we get the two zip and the. We get everything in here. Very cool. Let me kill that. Okay, so let's run that again. So I'm going to create another REPL. GMAPI dot config. What does request do? We might as well just make this by ourselves. We don't need no stinking library to do it, especially with all the controversy recently. <laughs> Place search. Okay, maybe it's a living, maybe it's not. Callback must be present. Uh, all right, let's just do this by hand. Nearby search results. Perfect. Uh, query. So where do I give it my key? Oh, right there, key. Web service ends forms based on a set of strings. Oh, I think we want text search. That probably, we can give it universities near, okay. So if we say output JSON and key equals, where'd my key go? And what was the query? Oh, just query. And query equals universities near oh, 215. Does it work? No, it did not. Maps.googleapis.com, place search output. 
Oh wait, that's strange. Did I screw that up? Oh. We don't give it... I see. We say slash JSON and key equals that. Hooray! Look at that. Okay. So we actually got back some requests. Very cool. And Long Island University. Okay. What is this place? City. Okay, cool. All right, this is going to work. This is going to be great. So we don't need that library. Let's get rid of it. Google Maps API. And let's make sure it's out of our package JSON. All right, cool. So we're going to install request, which is a library that makes HTTP requests really easy in Node. And so to turn what we made in the browser real quick into a so let's get rid of this, get rid of that. So we'll say request equals require request. And then, uh, ooh. so Google Maps API place JSON key query universities near change surrounding single quotes to that and I'm going to change this to zip and so we'll say uh, let zip equal my zip code and then we can do request URL error response body actually let's give this an object so we'll say URL and then JSON will be true and then we should be able to looks like my indenting is all screwed up here and we're gonna print out Actually, let's just do a debugger in here. No debug test. Ooh, I forgot something. That's why. I need to throw that on there. Cool. Still broken with indenting though. Okay, <clears throat> so popping in, perfect. Continue. Debugger, REPL. So we got body. All right, so what's in body? So we want body.results. And that should be an array, so we can grab the first one out of the array. And we can grab the name. Look at that. Okay, very cool. So, awesome. So this will be fun. So, if for us too, if you would like to become a doctor. So, I become doctor. All right. So, We're going to need to pass in, so our, our normal thing won't work because now we have to pass in a zip code. 
because of how we were doing the map before. Uh, and if you just join us in chat, say hi in chat, let me know where you're from. We're building a little phone call answering machine. Uh, you can call in to test out what we have so far if you're up right up here. Um, and just have a go at it while it's running. It should be working. But for now, I need to change this to not require the Hey. Uh, okay, so I'm just going to blow that away for now. Uh, we tried to do it nice. But for the sake of time, let's do this. So if... Let's do the same thing. So we'll say parse int and then I'll copy the same thing as here so if not digit send them back to menu okay cool which means we need to move our twimmel up and so now we can say if digit So if digit equals one, uh, call I am sick, I am sick with Twimmel, And uh, we'll say else if digit equals two call I am doctor. What is it? I become doctor with Twimmel and we'll send it the request. Uh, what was it called? Let's see. Scrolling up. Oh man, that was a long one. S two zip. Perfect. Uh, and all this is in the docs. Uh, we could pop over there and, and look at it that way. Oh no, we want from zip. Uh, called zip. Caller zip. Okay. From zip. Yeah, we want from zip. So request that body dot from zip. Awesome. And so in I become doctor, uh, let's actually just turn this into its own file for now. I still want that output. So we're going to let's make a folder called lib and we'll move our test to lib uh, uni.js and we'll open up that file. So lib uni. And we'll just say module.exports equals function twimmel zip. Okay. Delete that. Toss this in there. Oof. Um, and this is actually going to require us to do 
do a async thing. So actually we'll just return a new promise here. And it'll take in a resolve and a reject. So here we'll say if error return reject error otherwise we will resolve body one sec. we grab the first one body dot results so body dot results first one dot name lowercase name uh, and this will work for now cool so I think that'll work And this is all like derpy indented. Cool. All right. And now we can pop back over to here. We can say const get uni equals require dot slash lib slash uni dot js. Okay. And so then inside get doctor, I and mean, I become doctor. Uh, what do we want to do? We want to move this here for now, and then we're going to want to toss this on here. So we'll get a uni. And then we can take our twimmel. Yeah, this is kind of janky. Um, I kind of just want to finish this at this point. So I become doctor. I'll take in our uni, and we want to say twimmel dot say you should go to actually let's change that I think the so that should pop in the university is nearby go there and don't be lazy and then we can do response dot send twimmel dot to string. Okay. Uh, and I wonder if this will work. Let's find. Oh, we actually didn't call this yet. So this will take in this. We don't actually need to call I become doctor. We can. Oh, yes, we do. And the it doesn't actually need twimmel, it just needs to zip. So this can call get uni with the zip. That might work. Let's find out. Yeah, 
If not, we'll get the mean lady to yell at us. So. <laughs> Thank you for calling the. Ooh, that doesn't sound very good. Thank you for calling the sick support hotline. To continue, please press 1. Please tell me why you are calling. Select from the following options. Press 1. If you are sick, press 2. If you would like to become a doctor. I think the A. James Clark School of Engineering is nearby. Go there and don't be lazy. All right. That worked first try. I mean, that always feels super good. The code's kind of messy and janky, um, which usually happens on these live streams. But it, uh, it just kind of worked. So I have these numbers up here if you want to give it a try. Uh, it should work with your uh, zip code, hopefully. Um, yeah, give it a phone call. Let's see if anyone else has given it a go. Uh, I'll make one more call and show you the other route we can go down with this tree. Uh, for those, those of you that have just joined us, uh, we have made a uh, an interactive answering machine. So in the phone world, we call this an IVR. It stands for Interactive Voice Recording. It's basically that thing where you push through uh, the numbers, press 1 for this. I see someone's actually stepping through it right now, so that's really cool. And... Yeah, so we, we built this using Node and JavaScript and the Twilio API that's what powers the phone calls. Uh, the configure on that part is really straightforward. We just bought two phone numbers with the click of a button and we configured them with the starting point of our web server, which was just this welcome page. Uh, we'll do a full code walkthrough in a second. Uh, and then we just kind of used the Google Maps API for that last route to find a, uh, a place that's nearby given the context. So based on whatever phone number we give it, uh, it does that. So that's pretty neat. Kind of happy with this. Just tried and it gave the same response. Oh, that's not good. Let's see. I don't want it to give you the same response. Oh, wait. I screwed up. Good catch there. Good clutch, clowns. Um... Okay, so what happened was the we changed this function signature to take this get uni, but we didn't change it here. We actually gave it twimmel here. So we don't want to deal with the twimmel there. Uh, we just kind of want this to be an async function. So it was passing in whatever two string was being called on that twimmel object, which is why it gave us the same thing. Uh, so give it another try, and it should work. Uh, I'm going to give it a try too. I should get a different result as well. So let's call it again. Good catch. I'm glad you said something. I wouldn't have caught that. Thank you for calling the SICK support hotline. To continue, please press 1. Please tell me why you are calling. Select from the following option. I think the Rutgers State University is nearby. Go there and don't be lazy. Uh, funny enough, I graduated from Rutgers, so that worked out really well. That's where I'm from. I'm from New Jersey. Uh, so it worked for me. Did it work for you that time, clowns? I pulled up Rutgers, so it knew my zip code. So that worked. That was cool. <laughs> I'm a fan of that one. Yes, it is different. Very cool. Is it a university close to your, your zip code or postal code? Hopefully. Um, it, it, hopefully it works with the Google Maps API. I'm not sure. Uh, I think I can specify country. No clue, never heard of it. <laughs> uh, well, let's see. Text search requests. Query key location. Oh, I can, I, so I can get pretty specific. I can give it some radius and type and types. and Yeah, so there, there's some more fine grain we can give it. Um, 
the response from Twilio actually has some more information than just the zip code too. I believe it has the country. That was a really long response, whatever the hell this was. Alright, let's see. So, I can give it the state, I'm sure this is the color country. Yeah, so there's a lot in here. So we can get really specific if we want with the query. Uh, but hopefully it's close to you. Uh, but yeah, so let's do a code walkthrough. And then, uh, I don't know, I'd love to chat or talk about what else you guys are working on and uh, sign off in a bit. So, <clears throat> the first thing we did was we configured that Twilio phone number and we gave it the URL of my ngrok server, which is just right here. So whenever that phone call comes in, uh, Twilio looks up that URL and makes a post request there. So that's where the whole thing starts. So, let me move this back over. And if I flip over here, uh, so we first pulled in Express and Path. Uh, so Express is a web server framework for Node. It's a micro framework. It's very easy to work with. Uh, Path lets us build out um, operating system agnostic file paths. So it knows how to put the forward slash for Windows or I'm sorry, the, the forward slash for Unix environments and the backslash for Windows. Uh, body parser is just what parses out the HTTP request from Twilio. Uh, the Twilio library to build out that Twilio response, that get uni function uh, that we wrote. Um, what pretty much just returned us a promise, made an HTTP request to Google's API for places, searched for the zip code, uh, universities near that zip code. Uh, so we'll pop back into that in a second. Uh, and then we just created an instance of app. So libraries in JavaScript are just functions. So this one returned us a new instance of Express. And then we just set up our Express static middleware, which is what's serving that initial audio file. Basically anything that comes in that's not registered will be looked for in that assets folder. So it's a nice way to do like a catch all. Uh, we added the body parser middleware, which we required. And then we had just have that hello um, app handler just to make sure everything is working. And then we have the inbound welcome page. So this is where Twilio sends that first post request that comes in. And it says that the, uh, you know, the, it just creates a new Twilio response and it adds a gather. So it says, hey, press one to continue. You know, gathers the one digit and the action is the next IVR menu. Uh, and it just kind of nests that play. Uh, so what that looks like is, uh, this thing. So actually, let's pipe that into Vim so we can format it. So this is what that Twimmel actually looks like. So under the hood, uh, there's no magic. It just kind of does this stuff uh, once I get it formatted. <coughs> Ooh, missed that one. Cool. So this is pretty much all that gets sent back to Twilio. So Twilio looks for that this Twilio response, and it starts with this response block, and then it gives a gather instruction. So it'll be listening for those key presses on the phone. Um, and then it says, uh, this is a different route, uh, but it's the same thing. Here's that say that we add in. These are nested. Um, that's how this works. It's really straightforward. It's just a text response. And the Twilio library just builds that for us easily. So here's the play one. That's the welcome page. And after you go to the welcome page, it sends you to the menu. So at the menu, it says, please tell me why you are calling. Select from the following options. Press one if you are sick. Press two if you would like to become a doctor. Uh, and this is also just nested inside of a gather. And it sends that back. So, you know, these just keep getting chained. And you can see how you can build out a phone tree very easily with this. Uh, you know, just, I'm sure you could clean the code up a lot more, make it more modular. Uh, probably get rid of a lot of the reuse that I've done, um, you know, with just a little thought and some time. And then, so for step one is, you know, if you press one or two, so, you know, this little walkthrough. So please tell me why you're calling. So if you press one, this is where it sends you. Uh, I mean, regardless of which number you press, this is where it sends you. So it first parses out those, uh, the numbers that were sent, creates a new Twimmel response. 
if for some reason it didn't get any numbers, it says I didn't get any digits, uh, I'm going to redirect you to the menu. If the digit was 1, it sends you to I am sick and then sends that back as a response. In I am sick, we have a very straightforward gather that says, hey, um, you know, go send this to step 2, the timeout is 3 so it doesn't wait forever. Uh, I'm sorry that you were sick, that sucks. On a scale of 1 to 10, please enter how sick you are. And then we just have a <coughs> a very nice um, little you know if-else block that says, you know, if the person put in a 3 or less, you know, they're okay. Rest up, you'll be okay, you big baby. Why are you calling a sick support hotline? Uh, if they, you know, are over 3 or so 4, or four to 7, uh, you might want to go see a doctor. Less than nine, oh my, you should go to the hospital. If it's anything greater than nine, uh, you are probably not going to make it. Yeah, and these are just, you know, conditionally done uh, and sent back to the browser. Twilio will say something different best based on this input and then it gets sent back. Uh, the other route we went down is the, would you like to become a doctor? So that comes in here. Else if digit press is two, uh, I become doctor. It passes in the from zip, which is sent in that initial post request from Twilio. Uh, and that returns a promise with a university. So we'll dive into what that re request does in a second. But it returns us a string of a university name. And then it says, I think the university of whatever is nearby. Go there and don't be lazy. And sends that back. <coughs> and so that just returns get uni called with the zip code. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, we can actually just pull that out completely and use get uni here. Uh, we don't need to use this I become doctor function. So if get uni is called, then it will you know, send that back. So how get uni works is it just takes in a zip code returns a new promise from the start, so if you're not familiar with what promises are, uh, async JavaScript is asynchronous by nature. Promises are a, in, think of it like an envelope that will eventually have a, uh, a some kind of value in it. Um, whenever the function gets around to finishing, it will resolve with that value. So th what we're doing is making an API request to the Google Maps API, passing in our API key, uh, saying the query, we're just telling Google we want to search for universities near the zip code. Uh, and these percent 20s, oops, these percent 20s there are just uh, URL encoded spaces. And it just passes the zip code in. It calls request on that URL. Uh, this is a newer JavaScript feature. If the key is the same name as the value in a JSON object, you can just pass the variable name. Uh, I'm sorry, if the, if the variable is the same as the, the key, you can just pass in the one and it will kind of expand it for you. We set JSON to true because we want to parse as JSON. And then we just check if there was an error in the request. Uh, if there wasn't, we look up a university and resolve the body. Uh, and that's it. It's really straightforward. We start our app listening on port 3000. We're using this tool called ngrok to uh, expose our local host so people can, you know, hit our local server. It's how Twilio can talk to my computer running locally. Uh, and that's it. So I'm just going to call again, and we'll go down both trees real quick. Uh, if you have any questions about what we've done, about anything, uh, actually, let me push up the code real quick. Um, i got to pull that API key out of there. Actually, it'll just, it'll probably expire. I'll turn it off in a bit. Um, so get status. So let's add index package JSON lib add doctor step sure the master. Boom. So just like that. Uh, here is the code. Oop, that's not the code. Here is the code if you want to take a look at everything I just walked through and follow it down. Um, and I push that up and 
yeah if you have any other questions um you know drop them in the chat i'd love to answer them i'm gonna run through this one more time thank you for calling the sick support hotline to continue please press one please tell me why you are calling select from the following options press one if you are sick press two if you would like to become a doctor I am sorry that you are sick. That sucks on a scale of 1 to 10. Please enter how sick you are. I am really sick. I am sorry. You probably aren't going to make it. Oh man. All right, let's let's become doctor real quick. Thank you for calling the Sick Support Hotline. Please tell me why you are calling. Select from the following options. Press 1 if you are sick. Press 2 if you would like to become a doctor. I think the Rutgers State University is nearby. Go there and don't be lazy. Yeah, yeah that's great. Like I said I went to Rutgers. So <laughs> it definitely got the location right. Uh, very cool. So thank you all so much for joining me. Uh, if you want to follow along, build something similar, um, you can check out this awesome tutorial by our developer education team. Uh, and this kind of walks through building exactly what I've done using the same technology. It actually walks through a different uh, type of resource, which is our extraterrestrial, uh, I mean ET from the movie. So it, it uses that as a theme. Uh, it's pretty complicated and awesome. Uh, another real-world example, which I showed in the beginning, uh, of something built using this Twilio system is the Cards Against Humanity customer support hotline, which is kind of random. But if you go to Cards Against Humanity, you can uh, call that number up, which is a Twilio phone number, and it walks through the same kind of tech. I'm, I'm not quite sure what language they wrote it with, uh, but it does the same thing that we've done now. Uh, so, yeah. So, thanks so much for joining. My dog has been such a good buy. Talk Dog Gamer, thank you so much for uh, the follow. Uh, my dog has been a very good boy and has not barked the whole time. Uh, he probably wants to be on camera. Let me show him on camera real quick. Come here, Bubba. Come on. Up here. Yeah. He's a cutie pie. So yeah, uh, my name is Eddie Zaneski. I am a developer evangelist at a company called Twilio where we make these awesome phone things and other communication things possible for developers. Uh, if you have any questions, please hit me on Twitter. Um, toss me a follow if you want to see when I go live and build more uh, javascript or web things. Uh, and yeah, I hope you have a great weekend coming up. Thanks for hanging out with me. Bye.